Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of this video tutorial series. We're going to get our project structure set up. And uh, first thing you need to do is go ahead and open up Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. Uh, if this is in the future, go ahead and open up Unreal Engine 5. You can also follow this tutorial in Unreal Engine 4.26 or 4.27, whichever one is the most current. Uh, so we're going to navigate to games. We're going to create a blank template and it's going to be a blueprint by default just so it loads up faster. And I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, YouTube async loading. You can call it whatever you like. And I'm saving this in an F drive. This is an M2 uh, SSD or I, I think that's the, the nomenclature for it. Um, but it's a lot faster than what I was doing in my last series, which I was saving to a hard drive which I'm also writing a video to this video that I'm recording right now is also getting written to the same hard drive. So I was having compilation times running up to 300 seconds, which is crazy. Um, and my other projects didn't do that. And of course they're saved on the, on this drive. So I'm going to save this project on this drive too. And hopefully we don't have as many compilation problems. So I'll go ahead and create this. See, it's going to damn near start up instantly. That's the reason we create the Bluetooth, uh, the blueprint. I said Bluetooth. Now we create the blueprint version and then we just go ahead and convert it to a C++ project. The first thing I'm going to do is definitely turn off because I have uh, Steam VR on my PC. So whenever I open up a project, Steam VR wants to run. So I'm going to turn off these plugins real fast. Then I'm going to go ahead and restart my project. I'll see you guys in a sec. All right. So with that handled, I can go ahead and let's firstly create this uh, C++ project. So go to tools new c++ class and we're just going to create an empty class and uh, um, we're going to delete this once we get into rider but i do want to put it in a public folder so that it sets up a public and private folder for us and this is just going to be delete this so i remember to delete it and i'm gonna go ahead and create that all right so that went ahead and i guess it installed the rider link plug in as well which I didn't know it did uh, I'll double check here in a second uh, it should give me the opportunity to either install it in the game or install it in the um, engine so let's see how that let's see what that does here um, first things first let me come here to games it hasn't loaded up yet okay there we go we get the opportunity to install the plugin here you always want to install the plugin to the game, especially if you're using early access. If you are using a later version of the engine or you're using Unreal Engine 4.26 where this is stable, go ahead and install it into the engine. That way you never have to do this again. But early access, just install it into the game. Um, right now, Unreal Engine's uh, source files are being processed. Rider's doing a lot of thinking, so your computers might, it might be chugging along, but uh, you can definitely use Rider while your um, processes are happening. I'm also going to go here and get rid of these classes right off the bat. All right, so get this in here and get that and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this puppy. And I'm going to delete this puppy. All right, so um, now we got a nice folder structure set up from scratch. Uh, we'll probably have to restart the editor, which uh, I will do in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back in the editor and get our folder structure set up. So I'm gonna go here, and create a, a dev folder. It's where we'll do all our work. Um, right click in here, create a core folder. This is where we'll put things like the game mode or player controllers and stuff like that. Uh, or, and a game instance. Uh, I don't think we'll actually use the game instance class in Blueprint in this project. I don't think I did. No, nah, there's no Blueprint game instance, so uh, don't worry about that. Go ahead and create a new folder. This will be our Blueprints folder. And this will have a subfolder inside of it called Actors. Even though I'm only making one actor, I still like to practice this, uh, this organization. It's just something. It's like an OCD problem, I guess. I also want to create another folder for our data assets. So I'm going to call this data assets. And technically for a bigger project, if you were using the asset manager, which we will not be covering in this series, it's a far more advanced topic. Uh, if you were using the asset manager though, you'd want this folder to be in the content folder on its own so that you can point 
better to it in, in the asset manager. But uh, for now, this is fine. And then I want to go ahead and create a folder for our skeletal. Skeletal classes and also make one for our static classes. And this is just for our static meshes and our skeletal meshes. Um, so with that, I believe that's all the organization that we're going to need in the project. So I'm going to save this, save this level as well inside of a, a let me create a new folder here in the content browser called maps. And I'm going to save this as our sandbox map. And I also want to do one other thing is come into project settings and maps and modes. I want to go ahead and uh, set that sandbox map as our default and editor startup map so that we always load into this. Then I'll just save again. I'm going to close the editor down because I won't be using it for a little bit. We're going to create all the C++ classes. I uh, don't care about that. All right. So the rider link has been installed. We're good to go. So now let's go ahead and start creating our folder structure here. And for some reason, it got rid of my public and private folders. Uh, so let me recreate those. Let me make sure. Yeah, let me recreate those. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this async loading folder here. Add a directory and we're going to call this public. Uh, it says that that already exists, but I don't can see it. So what am I missing here? Um, uh, maybe I need to regenerate the, the project file. So I'm going to exit this and I'm going to navigate to my project. And I'm just going to uh, regenerate the project files or generate the Visual Studio project files and get that folder structure back. I'm going to open this bad boy up in Rider. Probably going to give me the, oh, no, it, didn't, it worked. Cool. All right, let me double check here. That's, that's not what we want. That's the engine. We want to go to games. Source and it's loading. All right, so we got our folder structure back. For some reason, these two classes um, don't exist. Okay, I don't know why that happened. We got an issue with our parts folder here. So let me just clear out these dependencies. So edit, just delete this here. And do the same here. I'm going to delete these. Um, I guess this is from the previous project that I created to test this out. So I'm going to delete that. This game mode base and game mode H class, I don't think I want to touch that at the moment. Um, might break the project. So I'm going to right click, add a directory. Actually, yeah, we're at a directory. It's going to be called parts. And um, do all this in the public folder. So I'm going to add a public directory for the skeletal parts. And I also one for the static parts. And then in here, we're going to create our classes that we're going to derive from in Blueprint. So Unreal class uh, inherit from U object, and this is going to be our AL underscore static mesh component. And I'm gonna also come into this skeletal folder here, right click, add a, add a Unreal class, and uh, inherit from U object. I'm gonna call this AL for async loading underscore skeletal mesh component. And, um, You'll see over here in our private folder that these CPP files automatically got linked with their um, .h files. So, all right. So we want to go in and inherit these classes from the actual classes that we want them to inherit from. So this static mesh is going to inherit from you static mesh component. If I could type, 
new static mesh component and I'm gonna delete this here it's not being used and this skeletal mesh component is going to derive from use skeletal mesh component and I believe the object is not being used either then we're going to go into our public folder and create a new directory and this is going to be our data assets and since we're only going to create one we can uh, go ahead and uh, add a unreal class and this is going to be our al underscore part data and it's going to derive from a uh, u object but we're going to make it uh, inherit from u primary data asset and um, we need to do one more thing we need to create an interface class so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new directory and this is going to be called interfaces and I'm gonna right click inside of here add an unreal class and there's an interface class that we can choose from here this is going to be our uh, let's just call it our part interface Um, and we'll do that the, the baseline code that needs to be created here so with all of that I'm actually going to uh, run the editor so make sure these classes compile correctly okay so we got a successful build there um, I want to go ahead and check that I'm gonna check that um, you yeah, know we don't have that game mode class so I actually don't know what our game mode is inherited from. So I'm going to go to project settings, maps and modes. Where is it? And our game mode base is just a regular game mode base class. That's fine. Okay. So what we're going to do here is just create our blueprint classes that we're going to use. Um, let's jump into this core folder here. Let's right click, create a blueprint class. We're going to create a game mode base. This is just going to be our GM async. test and we're also going to go ahead and create a player controller that we can add a UI to so I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, PC underscore async test save those I'm gonna go back into my dev folder and now I realize I need a folder for my widgets so I'm gonna just call this UI and I need to create another folder for my interfaces All right, and since we created a C++ version of our data asset, we can go ahead and come in here and create a Blueprint version of our data asset. And every time we update the C++ version, the uh, Blueprint version will get updated. So let's go ahead and create a data asset, which is a miscellaneous data asset. And let's derive it from our AL part data. So I'm going to select that, and we're going to call this our uh, AL well, let's just call this our DA underscore async test. And what else do we need here? We got our, um, let's go ahead and create our actor class, which is also going to just be in blueprint since we won't be actually doing any uh, functionality in it. Actually, we could create this in uh, C++ and uh, derive from in blueprint. So let me come here to the code here and I'm going to go ahead and jump into my public folder to create a new directory here and I'm gonna call this actors and I'm going to go ahead and right click add a unreal class of type actor and this is going to be our async test actor and with that being created, I'll let me try something. So there's this modules uh, tab. You get to it by going to tools. I believe it's in developer tools profile. Debug. It's in debug and modules here. And this allows you to look for the name of the project. So our project is async or YT. So and then you can recompile the project. And I think this will load the new classes that I just created. I'm going to double check here. This is a good way to recompile or hot reload without closing down the editor and restarting the editor. 
uh, which will could take some extra time. So if I come in here to my actors blueprints, I can right click, create a blueprint class, and let's see if our class pops up here. Async test actor, there we go. So we can derive from that and we're gonna call this our BP underscore async test actor. All right, all right. So we got pretty much all of the structure set up. Now let's just get everything tied together for now until we actually start coding. So in this game mode class, I wanna go ahead and set my player controller to the one that we created, the PC async test and uh, compile that. And also in the project settings, we're gonna set this game mode to our game mode async test. All right, save this, I'm gonna control shift S to save everything. And in the next video, we're actually going to start writing some code to start getting things working, uh, start filling out our data asset and uh, doing other things. So if you guys are ready for that, join me in the next video and I'll see you guys in there, peace.